What's up, everybody? I am back with my boy, Keanu Young Guns Moyer. This is the third or fourth show we've done together. This is a guy that is based out of Portland, Oregon. He is one of the top flyweights on the West Coast. This is a guy that you're going to be seeing at the next level in a short amount of time. He'll be headlining a fight um, at A1 Combat 3. I am really, really excited about that. Welcome back, man. Like, Keanu, here we are, dude. I'm happy to see you. It hasn't been that long, and but it, at the same time, it kind of feels like it's been a minute. I know, right? It feels like it's been a while, but I'm, I'm super excited to be back. You know, I always love being on your show. It's always a freaking nice time talking to you and getting, getting our words out to the fa- fans. And yeah, man, it's always a great time. I'm seriously excited. I am as well. And one of the things I have to ask you, you are one of the nicest guys that I have talked to since I've been doing this show. Oh, really thank nice, you, really that. polite. Um, yeah, like if I had to like name, like if I had to put together like a top 10 list of the nicest guys that I've ever talked to, you'd be on that top 10 list. With that being said, why did everyone, why does everyone talk shit about you? Why are you like, what, like what is going on? Like every single time you fight, it just seems like there's like a lot of animosity and people don't like you. What's the deal? Okay, well, I would say probably because of my amateur career. In my amateur career, I did talk a lot. Like, I had a big mouth, you know. I, I really did. Uh, yeah, I was I was cocky, kind of overconfident fighter. Really didn't really, yeah, w- really wanted to get my name out there. So I talked a lot, and I, and I backed it up in the cage, which was really, uh, I was really happy I was able to back it up in the cage. It's one thing to talk a lot, but if you just go out there and get beat every single time, that's not, it's not going to look good for you. So, you know, I always made sure to back up my words, whether I won or lost, I always gave it a hundred percent. And yeah, man, um, I feel like people expect the certain, uh, certain things from me. So like they look at my past fights and they look at my past in general and they think, yeah, this kid's going to talk shit. He's going to, um, yeah, he's going to talk shit. He's going to come at me some type of way. But, uh, for my last, three opponents I really have had no reason I've had no animosity with them I've had no reason to talk shit with them back and forth um other than having to go to these uh, the last two opponents I didn't have to go to Sam's hometown or Jesse's hometown but uh Sam and Mike I had to go to their hometown so that that creates a lot of animosity um whether we have problems with each other or not just going to somebody's town and finding them hometown and finding them is a uh creates animosity that's one reason. And also, um, you know, I just feel like I carry myself with such confidence now before it was more cockiness, but now I'm so confident in myself that, you know, um, I'm not really worried about my opponents or what they got going on. And that really throws my opponents off. You know, a lot of people are worried about their opponents and what they have going on and just worried about the next person, but I'm not like that. I can't uh, worry about myself and I'm focused on me and what I need to do. And uh, yeah, I feel like that really throws my opponents off, but this upcoming opponent, um, I'm kind of excited for it, honestly, because it brings me back to my amateur career. It brings me back to when I first get started to get getting into MMA and um, you know, uh, it feels good <laughs> kind of to have problems or not yeah, to have a real animosity with somebody this time because it's going to be a, it's going to feel a lot better when I smash his face come fight night. For, um, I, I kind of want to backpedal a little bit and set the stage because how we got here, it's kind of a, you kind of have to follow this breadcrumb trail to understand just this butterfly effect that came into play and like why Keanu has this opportunity. So I'm going to do my best to set the stage. Why don't you fill in the gaps, Keanu? So basically what ended up happening, you fight uh, Jesse Tafoya. That fight doesn't really pan out the way that you want. Can you talk a little bit about just kind of like what went down in that fight and how you ended up getting this opportunity? Because ladies and gentlemen, it's all of this is linked. So. Yeah. Okay. Well, I fought Jesse uh, Tafoya on February 13th for the Fire Power Promotions uh, vacant flyweight title. Um, That was before Uriah had bought the promotion that I'm fighting for now. And um, yeah, it just wasn't my night. I gave all credits to Jesse and his team. He comes from a world-class gym. They had studied me a lot. Um, and he was just a better man that night. I give all props to him. Um, I got caught. I've never been hit like that ever. So it was a new experience for me. And 
yeah, it just happens. It's the part of the fight game and, you know, you win some and you lose some. And, you know, I really, uh, I always wanted to be like Khabib or Floyd. I always wanted to be undefeated, but you know, I've learned so much more from my losses than I have from my wins. So I'm glad that I'm taking these L's at the beginning of my career, rather later on in my career when I wouldn't know how to handle it. Yeah. So, um, you know, there was honestly, there's a lot going into that fight. Um, I'm not making any excuses at all. Again, all credits to Jesse and his team. He caught me. He um, he was just a better man that night. But there's just so many circumstances going into that fight that really just led to me taking a loss. You know, um, I had got COVID the week before the fight, which I didn't tell anybody about. I shouldn't have. I should have told my coaches and my team about it because you know we have a whole pandemic going on. For COVID right now, there's been multiple, there's been millions of people that have died from COVID. It is a serious, uh, it is a serious sickness. And I didn't, I'm not one to pull out of fights ever. The only fight I've ever pulled out of was when I broke my hand. And when I broke my hand, I had no other option to pull out. I was in a cast for six months after that. So yeah, I got COVID before the fight, the week before the fight. Um, I had deal, I had to deal with a breakup during that fight camp, which I've never, you know, I've, <laughs> I'm not really into the dating scene anyway. So that, that was new for me. I've never had to deal with a breakup during a fight camp. Um, you know, I just had to deal with so much personal stuff. Two days before the fight had happened, my little brother had reached out to me and let me know that he had just tried to commit suicide. So, you know, I've just, there was just so much stuff going into that fight. I had the worst weight cut of my whole entire life. And I've done weight I've been weight cutting since I was 15 years old I know what I'm doing I got it down to a science and that was the worst weight cut of my life so yeah just so many circumstances played into me taking that loss but you know I'm back um this is how the world works man you know I get I'm truly blessed and I really got to thank God because seriously uh nobody gets opportunities like this I come off of a loss and now I'm getting a title shot you know I make sure year round I stay ready the fight just for opportunities like this, you know, uh, there's a difference between a, doing a fight camp and just training, you know, but I, I knew, I knew that I was going to have something coming up in June or in May. So I made sure I was staying ready for a fight. And then this opportunity ar arose and I'm just, I'm just beyond ecstatic because, you know, I get to finally really get to show my true skill set in this fight. I know this is a great fight for me. I know, I know, Everything that my opponent's going to do, I'm ready for. And yeah, it's just my time to shine. My time for me to go get my belt that I let slip slip from my grasp in my last fight. I will not let it happen again. I think uh, in terms of optics, and so people know that this isn't coming uh, from spite or us making up a bunch of shit. Um, you could research this for yourself and find out. But originally the bout that uh, Keanu's supposed to fight in uh, was it was set up for Jesse Tafoya to fight. It was supposed to be Jesse Tafoya. He was supposed to fight Jack Duffy. The fight was supposed to have occurred, uh, I want to say like two or three weeks ago. Fight gets called off because there's a dust up at the weigh-ins. They start slugging at each other. About the, the, the athletic commission says, nope, that's it. We're not letting this go on. They give Keanu a call. They're like, yo, are you ready? Can you make the weight? And we uh, bump out our fight for another month or whatever the case it was. And uh, you said, yeah, you're right. You're ready to go. So that kind of weird stuff like that just like almost never happens. And it just seems like all of these crazy things had to like get put into motion for you to get this opportunity. Yeah. Well, Chad, Chad Shepard is the matchmaker for a one. And he reached out to my coaches and my manager and was like, Hey, um, like you said, there's there's a little scuffle at the weigh-ins. The the fight got canceled. Uh, is Keanu ready to take the fight? Will Keanu take the fight? And I had got a call from my coach at like eight o'clock in the morning, and he's like, "Yo, do you want to take this fight?" And you know, I'm not really a morning person at all. So the first thing that popped into my mind was like, you know, fuck, man, I just woke up. Just give give me a second. Like I just literally woke up. I'm uh. Yeah, I'm not a morning person also. Just give me a second. Give me about an hour or two to think about it. 
It, it literally only took me about 20 minutes. I sat up, I had woke up and I was like, you all know what? Fuck this. I'm taking this fight because there, this never, ever happens. Nobody takes a loss and then gets a title shot that quick. So you all know what? I, I knew it was a sign from God. And I was just like, you all know what? it's a blessing in disguise. I'm going to, it's when one door closes, another bigger door opens. And there you go right there. That door closed for me, losing my title last uh, title fight. And now a bigger one opened opens because this is a bigger opportunity for me honestly it's uh Uriah Faber now owns the promotion uh which is a big deal it's going to be on UFC Fight Pass which is a big deal and yeah man I'm just yeah I'm just blessed man I'm so freaking blessed I'm, I, I can't I cannot wait I cannot with, wait two weeks until they say and new with um all of the the personal obstacles that you were encountering and the physical obstacles with the coronavirus do you almost feel like in a way this is like a fresh slate and like you don't have any of those things now and it's really just kind of back to the basics and back to just the fighting part of it where everything else is kind of normal man it feels so ah there's like a pressure lifted off my shoulders this fight it's just like Mm -hmm. so again like you know i'm I was really prepared for the last fight. I did an eight-week training camp. I put in all the work. I, I did everything that I was supposed to. I was not, I'm not saying that I was not uh, physically prepared, but it's one thing being physically prepared and then being mentally prepared as well. You could be the in the best shape of your life, but if you're not mentally there, you're, it's going to be hard for you to win that fight. It's going it, to basically your chances are now 25%. You've now knocked them down from a 90% to a hundred percent chance of winning that fight down to a 25 percent chance Mm -hmm. so you all know what i'm a hundred percent mentally here now i'm a hundred percent physically here which is when when those things play hand in hand together i'm undefeatable nobody could beat me no flyweight in the world will is on the same level as me when i'm a hundred percent physically and mentally prepared and yeah it just feels awesome because i don't have to deal with shit this fight i don't have to deal with anything uh there's no pressure on me at all i'm everybody's I wouldn't say everybody, but uh, the main critics of the fight game, if you look at this fight on paper, I'm supposed to lose this fight. If you look at from my last loss, this guy has all first round finishes. I'm supposed to lose this fight. I'm fighting him in his hometown. I'm fighting him with uh, his, the owner of his gym uh, owns this promotion. So, uh, you know, but then I'm just really happy because it's just like all the pressure is on him. Yeah, I don't feel no pressure at all. I'm so, excited because for my last three fights, all the pressure has been on me, whether right. it's been in their hometown or not, all the pressure has been on me, but now no pressure at all. None. It's all it, on him. It, in a way, does it, I've always wanted to ask this question. I don't know if I've just like outright asked this question to anyone before, but I'm going to ask you this question. When you're being brought in as hard B side, does it kind of like fucking piss you off a little bit? Well, honestly, for the last couple of fights, I really haven't felt like the B-side. For the Mike Tabera fight, I really didn't feel like the B-side for some reason. I felt like it was – I felt like the cards were more in my favor even though I was fighting him in his hometown. Right. And then with the Jesse fight, it's like we're basically meeting up. Neither one of us are from Sacramento, so we're just meeting up in Sacramento to just duke it out. So I didn't feel that – it wasn't that big of a deal for that fight either. But now for this fight, it's just like – Man, it feels so amazing. It's just such a great feeling. I'm just like, dude, he he doesn't know. Maybe he he does know what this feels like, but he hasn't felt this for a long time. He hasn't fought for five years. I've fought five times in the last two years. I have more experience in the cage than you've had. This will be my sixth fight. Whether I have losses or not, I have more experience in the cage than you. And I know what it feels like. I know when you're when you're walking out to that cage in front of all your family and your friends and you haven't fought that long time and you're fighting a real killer i'm a killer dude i'm going to show up in that cage whether i win or lose i'm ready to kill and he has never fought somebody like me and he's going to find out the hard way they're going to find out the hard way i've done this plenty of times i've just posted this on my story i've been to so many people's hometowns and beat their ass and taken their o and and taken a belt and that's what i'm going to do come may 29th mark my words when you look at your opponent, and this is just me, I try to be. It's hard, like when I when I know when I know people real good, like you. It's it's hard for me to like take out all the personal stuff and just look at things 
objectively because I've gotten like criticism in the past like oh you're just boys with all these guys and um you know, fuck you if you think that. But anyway, I'm looking. Exactly. I'm looking at. <laughs> I'm looking at Jack Duffy though, and I've got. I got. I. I, I kind of have a rude thing to say. I think he's a crusher, man. I do. I look at who, like who, who are these fucking guys that he's that he's fighting? His last opponent Nobody. was named Saint Shane Sargent. He literally was not able to add this. Like, if you go to Tapology right now, it says that he's 4-0. You're not even supposed to add stuff like this onto his record. That's why it's not on his record. He fought a dude that's 0-13 in his last fight, 0-13 on an Indian reservation. Like, don't get me wrong. I, I mean, I've almost had to take a couple fights on Indian reservation. When you're coming up as a pro, you got to do what you got to do. I've yeah. been there. But, you know, you're fighting a dude on an Indian reservation that's 0-13. Come on, man. Like. Bro, I, ever since I took my pro debut, I fought that, that that are ranked opponents, ranked in the United States, whether they're United States, nationally, I've fought ranked opponents. This guy has never fought a ranked opponent in nothing at all. You've been pro since 2012. I That's when I started my amateur career. I was 15 years old. You're a wannabe fighter. This is what people like this. He's a guy that literally gets to go around. He trains in Sacramento. He lives in Sacramento. He gets to be able to tell people, hey, I'm a pro fighter. You know how many people I've known since 15 that are, get to say that they're, I'm a pro fighter? Well, guess what I am? I'm a world-class fighter. I'm going to be a world champion come fight night, and he's going to figure out the hard way when he's waking up or when he's, when he's picking himself up off the canvas. <laughs> That's just flat-out facts. You are the first opponent that he is fighting that has a winning record. He hasn't fought a guy with a winning record. Exactly. All. So, and, and I'm just kind of looking at it, and um, I, I was a little surprised at that because I'm looking at it analytically, and I'm like, okay, well, what is he, what do I not understand? Why are the odds so skewed, and why does everyone, why aren't people giving you a chance? Is it just because they're fans? Is it just because it's in the hometown? And I just kind of well, get those it's, vibes. It's, it's the gym he comes from. It's the it's the area he comes from. It's the promotion that I'm fighting for. All that plays in a favor. So, like, I've been here and done this before. I fought an undefeated fighter in their hometown. I took an L, but at least I know what to do now to get the win. I went down to Miami on UFC Fight Pass on 14 days notice, actually 12 days notice, and fought an undefeated fighter. I've done this before. I've been there, done that. I'm going to go this time and take an L. Or take an L. He's gonna be taking L. I'm gonna be going there and taking my belt. That's what I'm gonna do. Tell Man, me, this guy. This guy's gonna figure out the hard way. Seriously. So okay, it sounds like Jack Duffy is somebody you really don't like, um, and you really want to hurt, and that's cool. Uh, this is a uh, this is a game about violence. So hey, you're not exactly. supposed to like all these people. Why? How do you know this guy? Like, where did all this beef started? Like. This seems to have gone on. You probably have known this guy for a while. And like, this can't be just like new beef all of a sudden. Like, where did all this start? Well, it's so funny how the world works. <laughs> like you said, it really is a butterfly effect because five years ago, before my first title shot as amateur, I called this guy out. I, I just, I don't know why I called him out. I called him out. I, I just, I think I had seen one of his fights or something like that. I'm pretty sure he posted his fight against that. Shane Sargent, dude. And I was like, I just wasn't impressed. Like GSP after Matt Hughes won, I was just like, man, I'm just not impressed by your performance at all, bro. I just, it's not that good. And then he says to me, well, man, you're amateur. Like you're not even pro yet. You gotta, you gotta step, step your record up and maybe one day we'll fight. And I'm like, I'm I'm ready to go pro right now. Like I after I win this fight, I'm ready to go pro. I'm gonna win my belt and then I'll re, I'll come out, go pro and whoop your ass in my pro debut. And he's like, man, uh, you'll what did he say to me? He said, You'll never be on my level. You're a scrub. And if we ever do fight, uh, like I'll I'll whoop your ass or whatever. And now it's so funny. Now we're now we're fighting each other. So I'm just like, it's crazy how the world works. I ended up that that's how it all started is I called him out on Instagram. I had seen his fight against Sh uh, Shane Sargent, called him out. And that was five years ago. Ever since then, he hasn't fought. <laughs> now and, we're fighting each other. And, and, and here we are. We're fighting each other. Well, let me ask you an objective question. Your dislike for this man aside, is there anything about him uh, that he does well that you're going to have to watch out for? I know this is a guy that, you, like, despite you not liking him, 
it would be foolish to not take him seriously. I know you are, but the question is like, what does he bring to the table that you are just going to have to keep in the back of your mind? Well, the, I mean, honestly, I beat this kid no matter where the go, the fight goes. I mean, I'm not trying to be overconfident at all, but literally, like, no matter where the fight goes, he's not better than me on the ground at all. He's not better than me striking. He's not better than me in the clinch. And it's not that I'm overlooking him at all, but these are just s- statistical, real facts. I'm better than him no matter where the fight goes. The only – when my last fight – the difference between me and Jesse was is that he does Jesse does weird shit like who the fuck just starts a fight coming out to throw the spinning back fist in the first combo that right there is just that okay he's a Jackson Week prodigy he comes from Jackson Week those guys are known for doing weird combos I know Team Alpha Male very well it's very simple they have a very simple game plan I know what I know what their style is I. I like, I know what I have to worry about. He's going to come in and do the same thing that he does every single fight. You cannot change your style unless you're fighting consistently. You want to go to the gym, you could change your style in the gym. There, You're not fighting in the gym. You you really know you only learn from fighting. You're not learning in the gym. When, when you're getting ready for a fight, when you're getting – when you're a fighter, yes, you're getting better at technic, technically. When you're a martial artist, you're, you're getting better – technically wise every single practice you're not learning anything as a fighter unless you're fighting you could train as much as you want in the gym you could learn all the technique technique that's techniques that you want unless you're doing that in a live fight how are you going to know if it really works or not how you could do it all the time on your training partners those are your training partners when you're going 100 percent live on somebody in a real real fight shit does not always work out the way that it does in the gym and you don't want to have to learn that the hard way. I've had to learn that the hard way. And he's going to learn that the hard way. When I go out there and I sock his fucking chin off his face, he's going to know, hey, these guys in the gym aren't trying to kill me. <laughs> and I'm going to try to kill him. <laughs> you alluded to a few things that are definitely uh, something to take into consideration. The venue, where it's located. Um, nobody wants to see you when we've, we've, we've been here before. I've talked to you about this before when you were fighting Tubera. It's the same situation, same place. I will know. I, I will, I'll tell you this though. I wouldn't go to a restaurant with you in Sacramento. I'm like, they're not only going to spit in his food. They're going to spit in my food too. I know, man. <laughs> I, I've, had, I've had to do some crazy shit. I, I tell, I told everybody that would listen to me <laughs> last fight. I didn't think it was going to happen. But this fight, I know it's going to happen. I'm going to have to get escorted, escorted to my room by the police or security. And I'm fine with that. It's okay. I'm, I'm, it's okay for me to be the bad guy every once in a while. It's all good. I'm down. I'm down for that because you all know what? He's going to deserve it. He's going to deserve watching me leave that cage with that belt because he don't, he don't respect me. You know, he doesn't, he's underestimating me right now. He don't think that I'm on his level. Like at least I give him credit and say, whether I think I'm better than him everywhere or not, he's undefeated fighter. He comes from a world-class gym and I give him his respect. That's the only place that I give him respect is that he's undefeated fighter. He comes from a world-class gym. Other than that, as a person, don't respect him. And he, yeah, that's, that's just, that's just what it is. (laughs) Can you talk a little bit, um, just kind of like putting things into perspective? There's been a lot that's been going on, and we and you already alluded to what some of those obstacles were outside of the cage. You dropped a disappointing uh, loss. You dropped a disappointing um, bout for you because I know how much work you put into that, and for it for you to go through an eight week camp, all the cardio, all the sacrifice, hundreds of hours in the gym. And then for that moment to get taken away, to just get caught like that, like it would be really, it would be really easy to like find yourself in a dark place after that. Like, fuck, like, do I really want to do this? Like, am I really as good as I think I am? Like, like, I think it would only be natural to have those sort of feelings post. Feelings, yeah, exactly. Right now, this opportunity like manifested itself that shouldn't have ever happened in the first place. You got a title fight. It's a brand new promotion, brand new ownership. It's it's a totally different platform. You haven't been on a card as big as this. You're headlining it. It's it's exactly. it, it, it's yep. incredible, man. Like it's an incredible opportunity. And so, can you just talk a little bit, like not so much about Duffy, but like winning on this type of stage, given the recent history, 
given all the stuff that you've had to go through over the past year, year and a half, like how sweet is that going to be to not only win on a big stage, but to win in the way that you want to win? You know what? I got to touch on that subject real quick because it's very true. After you, if you're a real fighter, man, if you are a real fighter's fighter, it, 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 eats you up inside to lose no i hate to lose i hate to lose it doesn't matter if i'm literally playing a card game i I hate to lose i have a winner's mentality but you know it i had i did have that that thought man if i was like man do i really want to continue to do this for the rest of my life is this like something that's really for me like you know it was a horrible feeling to just do an eight-week training camp like that my first world title fight and i lose like that you know so quickly too, but it's just like, you know what? You got to dust yourself off and get back to it. You know, real world champions, we real world class fighters, real, real fighters, fighters, we get up and we go and do it again. And that's, and that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to dust myself off and I'm going to go do it again. But, but now I know the outcome. I know the outcome is going to be different now. And I know that I have complete control. You always know that you have complete control of, of the outcome of the fight, you and you only, but it's like, um, it's one thing to like, think, think that you're going to win and then believe that you're going to win. You have to believe that you're going to win. And I truly believe that I'm going to win and, you know, just, just to win on a stage like this, just forget the last year and a half, everything that I've been through in my life to just go and win this world title. Like I'm going to win it is just, it's, it's a real, um, honestly leaves me at a loss for words a little bit because it's something that I've really spent half, almost half my life working for. I've spent half my life working for this. And I, and I know that I got to go do what I got to do, man. I got to go do my thing. I got to go, I got to go put on a show for everybody and I got to get the W that I deserve. It's just waiting right there for me. And I know what I need to do to get it. And that's put this kid to sleep or tap him out or get the win by any means necessary. It doesn't matter. I need to get my hands raised and I'm going to do everything in my power and yeah, man, it's just, you know what? It's, it's never a good story really without, awesome. without, uh, bouts of adversity. It's not a good exactly. story if that adversity isn't there. And one of the things about fighting at the level in which you fight at is there's no other teammates. Like, like I'm not talking about hobbies, I'm not talking about amateur fighting. And I don't mean any disrespect to any, to any amateur fighters or any hobbyists, but it's like, all the sacrifice that you go through in order to do this, like you have to sacrifice so much to go out there and fight for two grand or whatever the case is, right? Like it's insane what you're doing. Um, like you're not even paying yourself like a penny an hour. It's, it's crazy. The, exactly. amount of, it, like, the amount of work you're doing behind the scenes to get ready for this. It's fucking crazy. And you have to be kind of crazy to be a fighter. Like you're just wired different. Like you have to be wired differently. You can't be like normal. Like it takes a special kind of person to do this. Not everybody can. And, and it's really easy, right? When things don't go your way after you put in all the sacrifice, all the work. To just quit. To just quit. Right. And it's very easy after you lose to just quit. Just be like, I'm done. I don't want to do this again. You want to know what? Uh, Like I like, okay. There's, there's people that take their loss. Like this kid. This kid, Jack, I don't know if he's going to want to keep fighting after this. If you if you've been pro since 2012, the last time that I talked to him was five years ago. And he said to me, man, I'm one win away from being in the UFC or being on the Dana White contender series. That was five years ago, man. And time does not wait for nobody. Time's not waiting for nobody, man. And like if I if I'm when I beat him the way that I'm going to beat him, I don't know if you would want to fight anymore. Like, look what I did to Mike Tiber. Mike Tiber is a savage for coming back and fighting so quickly. Like, I, I, I like look, look at Sam. Like, Sam Panitz, uh, he's just been taking L after L after I beat him. And he was one of the top, top rated prospects in the United States before he made his pro debut. Top rated, number one. So, yeah, I don't know if he, I don't know if he's wanna, gonna want to keep fighting because uh, this isn't, this isn't when you get to the pro level. When you get to the top, top level, like this is on UFC Fight Pass main event, vacant title fight. Um, this is just just a fuck around fight. This isn't just a, a, a fight on the Indian reservation against some guy that's on 13. This is a big deal. And once you take that L, is he going to want to come back? 
Is he really going to want to do this again? Because I, no matter what, no matter, no matter whether I win or lose, I'm dedicated to this. This is my life. I've given my whole life to this and I'll continue to give my whole life to this. I don't know if he's ready. I don't know if he's ready for that. For the last three years, he's been out spinning fire in Hawaii, being doing whatever the fuck last year or so he's got dedicated to this and thinks that he, this is, this is for him. You know, this whole pandemic, I've had more fights than he's had fights in his whole career. So let's go. I'm ready. <laughs> we are about Seriously. to find out. The bout is not that far off. It's going to be exciting to see. Two weeks. Two, two weeks, weeks from today. Two weeks from today. No excuses. All you need to do is take your ass to your couch, turn on your TV, fire up Fight Pass. It's going to be right there for you. Make sure you uh, tune in and support Got two guys um, that are going to be fighting on this card. Keanu's one of them. The other one's Terrence Saturn. He's a good friend of mine. He'll be uh, fighting a few fights before Keanu. Um, he'll be making his professional debut. Um, so you have to make sure you say hi to Terrence for me. Uh, super cool guy. Um, him and his team, they know all about you. And they're like, yeah, man, that guy's like good as fuck. Like, like, like he's, he's really good. And uh um, I know. Hell yeah, that. Well, that's dope because I remember messaging you about him and I'm like, I've all, I've been watching that kid for a long time and he's this, I think the same, me and my team think the same thing about him. So that's awesome. That's yeah, really like, awesome. Uh, he's just like, yeah, man, I like, I like this guy's style. His submissions are really good. I like watching this guy fight. I'm like, I like watching him fight too. And yeah. It, it's just, it's really cool to like, to, to like think back, like, two really exciting guys in the flyweight division out on the West coast have this opportunity to fight in a brand new promotion and to have it backed by who it's backed by. It doesn't get any better than that, man. That's so exactly. Cool. Yeah. It's dope. Seriously. I, man. I'm excited for both of you. We got three minutes left and I'm going to give you those three minutes to thank whoever you need to thank. Hell yeah. Okay. Well, First and foremost, y'all always know that I want to give all thanks to my Lord and savior, Jesus Christ. Without him, none of this would be possible. And then secondly, I always want to give a shout out to my coaches, uh, Ishmael White, George Gonzalez, all the coaches at 10th Planet Portland. Those guys are always very opening and seriously take great care of me and teach me a lot. And seriously, I'm just very thankful for all my coaches. Uh, thankful to my team, Equip Academy. Thank you guys so much. Gonzalez Boxing and 10th Planet Portland. All you guys are so awesome. Thank you guys so much. And I want to give a shout out to my sponsors. Uh, they've taken such great care of me. I've literally fought. This will be my fifth fight during the pandemic, my fifth fight. And I've been able to fight so much because of my sponsors. They take great care of me. They always uh, continually support me. And I'm really thankful for them. So make sure you guys give a follow and make sure you guys give them a shout out or whatever you want to do. Give them some love, whatever. Uh, PDX Sliders here in Portland. They have two different locations. They have one in Southeast Portland. And they have one in the Selwood uh, district, Selwood location, Selwood Moreland area, to be more specific. You can make sure make sure to go there when you come here in town. If you if you're coming from out of town, if you live here in town, if you haven't been there already, I don't know what you're doing with your life because seriously, they got the best burgers, best sliders I've ever had. Top five rated in the United States. So go check them out and make sure you give a follow, a shout out, and some love to Ready Player Cards. Uh, they're a local business owned by my older brother and you could get Pokemon, Pokemon, uh, Dragon Ball Z, UFC, any type of cards that you could think of, you could get from this company, their local uh, small business. And it would be really, I'd really appreciate if you guys would go check them out. And thank you so much to my parents. Thank you to my mama. Mama Guns, you've raised a great child. You've raised a great young man. Look at me, I'm fighting for a world title on pay-per-view. You've raised a champion, and I can't wait to be wrapping my arms around you with that belt, taking a picture together, and saying, and new. Shout out to my dad. He's a great father. Uh, Josh Moyer, living out in Colorado, owning his own restaurant. Can't wait to come and bring my belt there one day, have it set up on the stand or something. And yeah, man, thank you again, Tyler, for having me on the show. You're awesome as fuck. It's always a great platform for me uh, to get my name out there. And I just really appreciate it, man. I'm so blessed and so thankful. All, it's, it, it's all love. Make sure that you guys drop my guy a follow. Make sure you tune in for the bout in a couple of weeks. He, I'm tell, like, he does what he says he's going to do. You'll, you'll, you'll see that for yourself here in only a matter of days. Keanu, always a pleasure, my man. We'll do it again soon. Hell yeah. Thank you, brother.